three. Okay. These like bunched up things in here. <laughs> what are they? Are this <laughs> lollipop? Yeah, I like broke them in half. <laughs> Great, love to see it. Do you think children should be able to know the identity of their sperm donor? I do think that they should be able to know the identity of their sperm donor. Um, for psychological reasons um, and also medical reasons, I think it'd be super important um, because you know later on in life, if they they really want that closure, um, they're not going to be able to get it if they don't have that that information to access. I don't think they should know the identity of their sperm sperm donor, but I do think that the sperm donor should have to supply um, all like medical information, all family medical information. And then if there is a problem that arises when it comes to medical issues, they, the agency that the, like the mother has gone through should be able to contact the sperm donor to ask about the information. I think so. I think, yeah, I think so. Why do you think children should know who their sperm donor is? I think that if a child feels that it's going to get them some satisfaction out of knowing who their sperm donor was, then you might as well give it to them. I think if they want to, they should have like the option to, but they don't like have to. If you were a child of artificial insemination, would you like to know who your sperm donor is? Nope. <laughs> um, no, I don't think so. I think that if it were me, I would, just because it's hard growing up with only one parent and I can speak from experience from that. But at the same time, I think that the mother is making that decision before the child's born. So that's just something that they have to like that they have to accept? Um, I feel like, yes, I would in some cases. I know that Kim K is going through that right now. Um, in that case, probably not. I don't know if that would be a good thing to like, you know, know, because I would like to think that Kim K is my mom. Um, so, <laughs> just drop it, just drop it. <laughs> I think changing the privacy laws around sperm donation would decrease the amount of sperm donors willing to donate. Are you saying if you were to make it where people can know? Mm -hmm. Oh, I definitely think it would because I don't think that people who are willing to donate sperm want to be considered the father of those children. I, I don't think that privacy laws is the motivator. Like, I think that the only reason people probably do that is for like monetary, like money. So I think as long as they're still paying this donor, I don't think anything would change. Probably, because I think that the idea of like sperm donation is for the donor at least is so that they can be anonymous. And if they don't necessarily have that option to remain anonymous, then they'd probably be less willing to donate. Yeah, I think so. Just because like they won't have like the for sure that they the kid like won't know who they are. What do you think the psychological factors that might impact a child not knowing who their sperm donor is? I feel like all children, you know, pull things from their parents and they, you know, kind of strive to be more like them. And if they can't do that in their life, then they might feel lost and like not know who they are inside. And, um, okay, is I mean, I think it might be hard, especially when they're young, growing up, seeing other children with their fathers and knowing that they don't have a father and they don't know who it is. But I feel like if they just have a really strong relationship with their mother, um, that can be enough for children. And just making sure they know that they have someone there for them. Um, I think it really depends on like a child by child basis. They could feel, um, I guess, a sense of like distance and not really knowing who their father is or where they come from or their history or heritage. I feel like they won't have like a strong like identity of like who they are just because they don't know like where they come from, I guess. Which disclosure method do you think is best and why? I think um, disclosure and non denominity is probably the best. So that way, you know, you know that you are a product of artificial insemination and then you also, you know, have the opportunity to reach out and get to know who um, your actual biological parents 
The one where they do know that they're the product of artificial insemination, but they don't know who the donor is. Um, I definitely think it's more like a case-by-case -case basis, though it really is up to the mother because she's the one making the decision before the child's born. The disclosure and anonymous, where the person can remain anonymous, but the child knows that there's they were a product of sperm donation. I think it's disclosure plus anonymity because the kid will like know their sperm child, and I think that's really important that they know that they're like that their mom just wanted to have them and like didn't have like another person to have them with, I guess but they still don't know the dad, so it like protects the sperm donor's identity. If you were a sperm donor, would you consider yourself the parent of the child you helped produce? No. That's a good question. Okay, well, yeah, I would consider myself the, the parent because, you know, he is a part of me, um, and uh, it would be hard for me personally to, um, to know that I couldn't be an influence in his life. So I feel like the only way I would be okay with being a sperm donor is if I could be involved in uh, my child's life. I would not because I feel like from a man's point of view, they're really just donating sperm. They're not donating themselves to be a father. Like if they wanted to be a father, they would have children. Produce. Um, no, because a parent is like someone who raises the child. Like it doesn't matter if your sperm created the child. If you don't have like a say in like how it's being raised, you're not a parent.